sun, whether it's morning or afternoon for you. We appreciate your time and the uh, the participation that you uh, you're giving us in in terms of taking some time out of your day and and joining us for this webinar as we talk about why voicemail replacements are calling on ABST. So for those of you who are not familiar with ABST, we indeed do have a very long history. Um, one of the things that ch continue to challenge our sales and marketing folks is that uh, our, our desktop notoriety is sort of limited based on the fact that we don't have a phone or some other device on the desktop that boldly um, pronounces our, our logo or our company name. Um, but we, in fact, have been around for 30 years, and our, our original um, beginnings are with voicemail. And so you'll see as we talk uh, in this discussion about why, why legacy replacements are calling on us, it's because we have many of those legacy features that around were around oh so many years ago with other products that are considered legacy today and I'm talking about products like Octel and Centigram and things of that nature if those are familiar to you at all from a UC application deployment perspective what we want to remind you and let you know is that although we're talking about replacing voicemail today, um, there is the potential to add a great more functionality to this product. It is not just a voicemail product. It is not just a legacy replacement for voicemail. We, in fact, over these 30 years have developed a number of different capabilities, whether it's unified messaging or uh, features that fit into a mobility requirement depending on what your organization does or how many mobile employees there are, um, speech recognition from a, from a, a personal assistant perspective as well as uh, speech enabling automated attendance, and then from a business process perspective where we in fact can extend or customize the CX to provide functionality that is similar to something like an IVR, for example, where we're integrating with a back-end database uh, and providing callers information over the phone from that database, either using their touchtone keypad and soon uh, through a speech interface. So the point is that the core of the product is the voicemail, is the CXE, uh, previously known as Call Express, but at your own pace, you'd be able to add this type of functionality, this UC functionality, when you're ready to do so. What we wanted to do today is um, take a look of a, at a profile of a customer, uh, obviously the University of Toronto, who um, is, uh, I guess comes from a, a background of legacy product, as you'll see why I say that in just a moment. Um, but had the challenges or a number of challenges that they wanted to try and accomplish um, with moving ahead with newer technology that might ultimately even bring them into the world of UC. And we're going to talk about those challenges and the reasons why they chose AVST CXE to be their voicemail solution. Now, for those of you who don't know, University of Toronto is Canada's largest university. Um, there are over 11,000 faculty and staff members, and as you can see there on the right, some 72,000 students. So this was no small task in terms of uh, migrating them from their existing technology to the CXE. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, one of their biggest challenges and the things that they wanted, one of the things that they wanted to do was centralize messaging across three different campuses. And so what you see here is that we were able to install the CXE in the central location, a full 192-port system 
comprised of a system server, which is at the bottom of the stack in the center circle, four call servers, which handled a large amount of their call activity, both auto attendant and voicemail, but also had two other locations on the campus that they wanted protected with local survivability. And so the design was developed that put two call servers in each of those two, I'll call them remote locations, so that there was survivability. And if there was a loss of connection to that central site, those call servers would continue to operate autonomously. Now, some of the benefits that come from this, although not necessarily part of what University of Toronto did, um, call servers are known, our call servers are known to be able to integrate to multiple systems at the same time. And in fact, using call servers, you in fact could um, manage uh, different integrations depending on the type of architecture that was required for your apartment, uh, your, your, your organization depending on the geogra geography or disparate locations or disparate um, PBX makers. And certainly, if you're spread out across multiple time zones, then we can effectively manage that either by call server, by integration, or in fact, right down to the subscriber level. Um, Disaster recovery was very important to them. And in fact, this type of multi-server architecture provides for that sort of thing because we eliminate the single point of failure. Uh, virtualization, we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, we, in fact, do support VMware, or VMware, in fact, supports our product line in terms of being virtualized. And so there's a great deal of potential there should you integrate to a voiceover or IP-based PBX. So in terms of survivability, as I mentioned before, putting out multiple call servers eliminates that single point of failure by spreading out the number of ports you would have in your hunt group, let's say, behind the pilot extension for voicemail spreading them out and dividing them up over multiple call servers, eliminating that single point of failure. And that was this decision that, that was a, a very heavy um, part of the decision was made on the CXE based on the fact that they would not have a ring no answer condition if one ser server were to fail. Only a percentage of their ports would be unavailable, but they would always answer the phone, auto attendance would always play, and voicemail would be recorded. Now, what they hadn't chose, although they're continuing to consider, is a high availability option that we offer as well. And this creates a redundant scenario with the system server in the event that a system server would go down or become disconnected from the call servers. The call servers can't deliver the voice message to the system server where it's ultimately stored in that scenario. So having a backup server which is passive and waiting to go into action should the primary um, active server fail, um, all those messages would be delivered at all times, and there would be no impact to the call servers or the calling community or their subscriber community. And in fact, yet another option is available in terms of protecting your environment um, by providing a, another level of protection with a disaster recovery solution where, in fact, yet a third system server can be located at a different location, perhaps a data center or a, or a disaster recovery location, where if the main site were to be lost altogether due to inclement weather or, uh, or fire or uh, some other disaster, this site, which is being backed up on a, on a regular basis, um, would then be able to provide voicemail and automated attendance services to the voicemail community. Another one of the challenges that 
University of Toronto had was how are we going to train 11,000 people on a new system? This is not going to be a small task. The good news was with the CXE is that we support these alternate TUIs, which in fact mimic or emulate the legacy TUIs, and I'll spell that out, telephone user interface, the actual touch tone buttons that you push in order to invoke commands, um, are, are very much, or are, are in fact designed to be exactly like the daily activity of every one of the ones you see on the screen there, the Octel Aria and Ser Serenade and other legacy products. The Octel Aria was the system that University of Toronto had and this made for a very flat or minimal amount of training that was required in terms of uh, bringing the users into a new system. They simply had to, uh, the first time they logged on, um, reached the tutorial, which asked them simply to record a name, record a greeting, and change their password from the default to a personal private one. And they were now listening, listening to a prompt set that was exactly like the one they were using yesterday on the Octel before they moved over to the CXE. So we make it very easy to migrate these old legacy systems, especially when you have a large user community, which could be a daunting task in terms of figuring out how to train them all. Now another challenge that was important to them was, uh, by a large degree, uh, based on their auto attendant requirements. They have a huge number of auto attendants. And uh, there were, although the Octel was pretty strong in that area in terms of call processing, CXE is certainly no slouch in that area and also very strong and programmable in, in being able to recreate and or improve the uh, caller experience in terms of auto attendant menuing. We, in fact, deployed 300 automated attendants, which um, were developed both from a DTMF point of view as well as a speech-enabled point of view, providing 24 by 7 access and uh, all types of menus that uh, you might imagine at a, at a university as large as this one requires, um, as well as providing typical types of standard call processing announcements that you might expect, like operating hours and driving directions, et cetera. And very proudly, we can say that the CXC actually takes 450,000 plus calls a month. So um, those, that architecture that we showed you with the four call servers in the central location takes um, a predominant amount of the volume that comes at University of Toronto, and then those that over calls that overflow um, actually move out to the other uh, call servers in the um, those two remote locations. Lastly, the business challenge that uh, they were faced with was deploying unified messaging in an ever evolving and changing email environment. Um, certainly at a university as large as Toronto, there was a number of different challenges in terms of email because of the number of email systems they, in fact, supported. Uh, having multiple email systems, versions, um, and maker types um, made it difficult for them to provide any kind of a real synchronized unified messaging experience before looking at the CXE. And so one of the things that they learned about our product is that we're very strong in a number of different areas, in particular in our ability to integrate with multiple email systems at the same time. And not only, you know, could these be different brands, if you will, or let's say at a university, you might have something like Microsoft Exchange and then perhaps some Linux or Unix-based email system, some IMAP4-type email system. 
but what's unique about the ability to have multiple integrations is that you could, in fact, use it as a tool to migrate from one version to the next version. So, in fact, if you're today Exchange 2003 or 2007, as you start to move up to 2010 or and or beyond, you can set up the integration to 2010, and as you migrate your exchange users from the older system to the, the newer system, you can simply change their integration type uh, through the administrator console to now be on the 2010 integration. So that's where their voice messages will now be delivered versus the old email system. So we're very um, we're we're a good partner and a good tool in that regard in terms of customers' needs for moving forward with technology. Although elsewhere in the enterprise, if it's somehow connected to voicemail um, and or via unified messaging, um, we can actually accommodate that kind of experience. Additionally, the mobile client is of interest to the University of Toronto <coughs> excuse me, because it provides um, a great deal of functionality to that mobile worker. And more and more of us, although we're talking about a university here where you would imagine people are at their desks quite a bit, um, there's certainly always a percentage of the employees in any organization that are much more mobile than others. And so the mobile client um, devised both for the iPhone and the Android and natively coded for those particular operating systems uh, provides a great deal of functionality for that mobile user in terms of managing uh, the calls that come to the office and then, in fact, are routed to their mobile phone based on a schedule or uh, the, um, the chance that they may have, in fact, uh, invoked a change to their availability and or their presence. Um, and it can also support um, an acronym which you probably are hearing more and more these days called BYOD, or Bring Your Own Device, where, in fact, if the company is supporting a BYOD program and users are, are bringing their personal phones to work and signing off on a program, using an app like this will help them keep what is personal personal and what is business business. So let's take a look at the CXE in general just to understand um, what else it provides in terms of uh, why an organization like the University of Toronto um, bought off on, on deploying it in their organization. Now, if you see uh, over on the uh, right side towards the top, replacing legacy voicemail, well, that's what we've been talking about. And um, it's, it's obvious both from the, the migration ability, the, the alternate TUIs for legacy systems, um, the ability to uh, recreate a huge amount of call processing requirements if necessary, that uh, we indeed are a, a great replacement tool or candidate for uh, a large legacy system. As we just got done talking about, unified messaging is a strong attribute to the CXE and, in fact, something that's also a long part of our history. Although I said we were about 30 years old, uh, unified messaging is no new it's not a new uh, feature for us. In fact, we've been doing unified messaging somewhere between 10 and 15 years now, although it's only prominently known to most of us because the folks like at Microsoft are, are talking about things like unified messaging. Um, if you are, in fact, on a legacy system today, you probably or may also be on a legacy PBX. And what I failed to mention earlier is that the University of Toronto is a Centrex customer. And so it was important for us to be able to integrate to Centrex, which you would 
I'm sure all agree that Centrex is certainly a legacy technology, yet give them the kind of functionality like unified messaging and mobility and or speech access to provide them quote unquote unified communications capability, although still integrated to a legacy system as old as Centrex. So overall, ABST's UC solutions are comprised of four particular functionality areas, if you will. Um, we've, we talked about mobility in the guise of the mobile client and unified messaging. Um, and certainly, we've talked about voice today um, in the uh, voice replacement context of, of replacing legacy systems and uh, what we can do there. And we touched a little bit on the ability uh, to extend the CXC and, in fact, create business applications that provide you know, database information over the telephone, but not limited to just that. Um, certainly, there are other types of applications from desktop to uh, telephony infrastructure that can be developed to provide functionality that otherwise might not be possible with any part of that being legacy infrastructure. So for example, creating a click-to-call application, uh, we indeed could do that based on our ability to extend the CXE, which is integrated to whatever phone system you have, could even be Centrax, but create a, a click-to-call type of an application. Um, we don't talk about it much in this particular webinar, but we have an integration to the Microsoft Link desktop, which in fact could be enabled as a soft phone. And yes, once again, your PBX environment could still be a Centrex dial tone. So it isn't necessary to uplift your entire uh, enterprise in terms of telephony infrastructure in order to accommodate UC type functionality. Now how is all of that possible? It's because of our interoperability, probably our strongest suit. Because of what we've been doing for as long as we've been doing it, what we've become extremely good at is our ability to integrate with such a variety of product, technology, and, and points relevant to that unified communication circle. And that's, that's really what makes this possible in terms of integrating to old and or new technology and bringing it all together into some sort of a UC type infrastructure. Just to give you an example, one of the most important things we have to be able to do is integrate to whatever PBX the customer has. And so certainly IP and SIP-based integration is all the buzz and what everyone is talking about today and most often is what the requirement for us is. But there are organizations that aren't ready or have disparate environments that uh, may have grown over years through acquisition and not all the sites are one name brand type PBX. And so how are you going to bring them all together into one voicemail community and call processing capability? By using CXE and our strong ability to integrate with so many different products, technologies, and PBXs. The latest version, 8.2, has a number of interesting uh, attributes to it, and we'll, uh, we'll go over them right now and give you an idea of what's avail currently available in the product. So eight, version 8.2, in fact, had three releases over the, let's say, past 12 months. Um, we talked about that mobile client, uh, which was a very exciting introduction to the marketplace and created a lot of buzz in terms of us being able to provide an app for those smartphone, smart, smartphone users, I um, just mentioned the Microsoft Link integration and our enhancements that were made there came along about midway. And most recently, in the past few months, um, we are now VMware ready. 
certified by VMware uh, to be a completely virtualized solution, both from a system server and call server perspective. So for those of you who are strong in that area, have virtual farms and that sort of thing, and your PBXs are IP-based, because naturally, if our integration is going to require a TDM integration, which would require hard-based wiring, um, we can, in fact, virtualize all the servers, um, not just the system server, but also the call servers, based on the fact that we'd be using a SIP or IP-based integration. The ability to integrate, uh, virtualize the system server uh, is supported by VMware by using direct path I.O. mapping to accommodate our security soft, our software security USB dongle. And so the dongle can be plugged into the virtual machine platform uh, while the system server is, in fact, a virtual host on that machine. Um, we've, in fact, increased scalability of the system uh, up to 500 points ports at this point 20 call servers and 40,000 users, 20,000 of which can be unified messaging users. So certainly the product is scalable at this point, and in fact even more. <coughs> Excuse me. We've also included and are now shipping um, a couple of the UC Connect sample applications. UC Connect is the option that's required for exploring and or exploiting, if you will, the CXE in terms of customizing or extending it when it comes to business applications, as, I, as we talked about. Um, the two sample applications are very unique and interesting, and one of which is very useful in terms of being able to determine, in fact, what phone you're calling from if you were to call the port that this app runs on. So. Given a, an environment like the University of Toronto, for example, multiple buildings over a disparate geogra geography uh, or geographical uh, nature of their campus, and I'm a help desk personnel and I have to go out to a user who's complained about static on their phone. And I get there, I don't know if I'm at the right desk, the phone's not labeled, I don't, no one else is around. I'd be able to call this app and actually determine where I am based on the information that's coming over the call. In that same regard, but sort of on an inbound basis, uh, we in fact can now route calls through this uh, through another sample app that we've provided that gives uh, companies an ability to create an application where we can route calls based on caller ID or ANI. And not only would that be possible, but with our strength in the call processing arena, as we've talked about earlier, you'd be able to devise an application that might send the caller perhaps to another step in the menuing process where they could now um, enter some input based on where they've been directed on by ANI and then perhaps um, enter an account number or something of that nature and actually be taken into the rest of the appropriate area of that custom application. So very strong in that area in terms of our ability to extend the product. And that brings us to the end of this presentation and time for questions if we have some. Emily? Yes, we do have a few questions. Great. Um, the first question is, I plan on moving to the cloud with Microsoft 360, and they're wondering if CXE can support uh, Unified Messaging in both environments at the same time. Yes, in fact, we can. And it's unfortunate we can't cover all the details in these short webinar series. Um, if we were talking mostly about Unified Messaging today, that's one of the things that we would be boasting about. Yes, we have an integration to Office 365. And we could set up that integration um, as, I guess, the new system that you'll be migrating your users to, e even though we might also set up integration to the premise-based email system you, you now currently have. And so we would be part of that migration process. OK. Um, how do you integrate Centrix and IP 
do you still use dialogic cards? Well, so Centrex is uh, the TVM version of Centrex because there is a an IP-based version of Centrex out there. Not every central office provides it, but in most Centrex um, applications, it is a physical connection and does require telephony boards, the dialogic boards in particular that we use uh, for the Centrex lines to come into, as well as an SMDI connection, which is provided by the phone company. Now, there are ways to um, create an IP type of integration by using off-server um, access points or gateways, if you will. So one side in comes the Centrex lines, the physical connections, and the other side, a SIP connection out to CXE. So we can kind of accommodate both worlds or both technologies there and, and even virtualize those call servers, even though there's a physical connection to Centrex at the gateway. OK. Um, next question, is there a TUI for CallPilot 5.0 or 5.1? Well, to answer that question, when I am asked it, um, I respond with, we have a TUI for the Nortel Meridian Mail, which in fact is their legacy product, CallPilot, although those versions might not be the current versions, CallPilot is still on the market, although from our position, we believe that the call pilot is not too different from the Meridian Mail TUI. And if any of you are uh, certainly the person asking the question will know what I mean by when I say the two-digit commands that are so familiar to the call pilot were also true on the Meridian Mail. So um, we, incur we have demo mailboxes we'd be happy to set up for you to, to try out. We have a quick reference card that you could, uh, um, we, we'd be happy to send you so that you could see the similarities between the call pilot and the Meridian Mail. I'm sure you'll be uh, happily surprised that it would probably do the trick. OK, great. Um, the next question is, uh, with CXE, is that able to be virtualized? I'm sorry, again, Emily? Um, can CXE be virtual? Be virtualized? Be virtualized? Sorry, that's okay. And, and and so yes, yes, it can. We in fact are VMware ready. So we've gone through VMware's certification process. Um, so it's not something we just tried out on our own and we know that it works. In fact, they have certified our product as VMware ready. So. Yes, both the system server and call servers can be virtualized. OK, perfect. Um, it looks like that's about all the questions that we have. Um, so we want to go ahead and, again, thank everyone for joining us today. We really appreciate your feedback. And we also look forward to seeing you on a future AVST webinar. Um, Ed, did you have anything you'd like to add? Other than thanking everyone for joining us today, we do appreciate your time. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great day.